Hey guys, I hope you and your families are doing well. I want to start this video with a question. If you were going to improve at a skill-based activity, how would you go about doing that? So if you're watching this, you probably have a profession or you're really into your sports and or both, right? So you may be a lawyer, a doctor, or a dentist, a teacher, a software engineer. You may love playing football at the weekend. You've got a handicap or two on the golf course. You're exceptional at tennis. You love rugby, you love snooker. Well, if you got really good at something, both in a professional capacity or a sporting capacity, how did you get really good? And if you were going to coach someone else, to become really good, how would you go about doing it? So this is where the concept of deliberate practice comes in. So there's a book written called Peak by Anders Ericsson. Absolutely changed my life. If any of you are parents, it's actually the best parenting book inadvertently that I've ever read. It's absolutely fantastic. I would really recommend doing it along with Atomic Habits by James Clear. But what I want to do in this video is try to make you realize that trading is a skill set. And if trading is a skill set, it means we can improve at it. So how do we go about improving at it? Well, we have to create activities where we're focused on improving specific parts of our trading and then creating feedback loops for ourselves. So every trade really has four main parts to it. It has the identification stage, it has the controlling risk stage, it has the risk mitigation stage, and then it has the optimizing profit stage. Then we're going to take this video a little bit further because there's three types of stocks that I focus on trading. These are going to be true market leader stocks, momentum leader stocks, and also group theme leader stocks. At the end of the video, I'm going to show you how you can very quickly scan for all three types of these stocks. Before we get into it, let you know that MarketSmith is today's video sponsor. If you're interested in a discounted trial, then there is a link in the comment section below. So as I said there in the introduction, we want to treat our trading as a skill set because if it's a skill set, that means we can improve upon it. We can create deliberate tasks and activities for ourselves, create feedback loops so we can start improving our skill in certain areas of the trade. So each trade really centers around four main areas. Number one, how do we identify a high quality setup? Number two, how do we control the risk to create an asymmetric risk versus reward trading opportunity? Number three, how do we mitigate the risk? So free roll the trade, take the risk out of the position and then but number four is how do we go about optimizing profits, both thinking about the monetary gain, but also the efficiency of the monetary gain. Then we can break it down into subsections of these four areas as well. So in terms of the identification, well, then we can start breaking it down into subsection. Go, okay, what are the type of stocks that we'd like to trade? So TML type stocks. These are the O'Neill, the CanSlim type stocks, big earnings, big sales, big estimates, global product, preferably involved in a new revolutionary technology, such as artificial intelligence. We can think about momentum leader type stocks stocks are, that have the high 20-day ADR percentages. We can think about leadership groups and leadership themes, whether that be cybersecurity, EVs, artificial intelligence stocks, whatever it may be. And then how do we identify the leading stocks in there? So we have the main components of a trade, but then we can break it down into the subsections and then really work on improving different areas of our skill set within trading. So what I want to do in this video is I'm going to take you through bar by bar four stocks. Okay, It's going to be Uber, it's going to be Broadcom, it's going to be DoorDash and Carvana. Now I'm going to go bar by bar and then I'm going to show you where my entry point was at the time of filming this video. I still have a long position in these stocks, but this is how we can start working very deliberately on these four overview areas. So I'm going to teach you how do I identify a high quality setup? How do I control the risk? How do I mitigate the risk? How do I optimize the profits? You'll see in the description of this video, there is a link to, like, to a Google sheet and you've probably seen some other bar by bar video on the channels where you can then be recording your results to really work on improving at this. So we've got Uber Low it up here okay so I'm now just going to delete these and we're going to go bar by bar. Okay, so Uber is in a nice powerful uptrend here. It ticks a lot of a lot of the cancelling criteria. You've got 52 week highs coming through. It's basing around its 10 day EMA. Now I'm going to start playing it forward bar by bar. And the first setup that I'm going to show you is what I call a shakeout demand tail. Okay, so we're just going to go bar by bar here using the trading view replay function. Okay, so undercuts to 21, not much volume coming in. Okay, oh, interesting. Now I've got an imagination here. I'm going, ah, okay, potential cup and handle type pattern forming here. This looks like it's kind of rounding out, held above the 50, RS lines turning up, the volume is dried up. This will be quad witching day on Friday, the 15th of December, 2023. So we can somewhat ignore the volume there. But what I'm now expecting Uber to do here is run into the base highs, run into this overhead resistance, okay? I'm expecting it to stall out here. There's going to be overhead resistance from trap buyers, also psychological resistance as well from traders that were buying it lower and potentially selling part or all of their position into this pop here, okay? But what I'm looking for is a shakeout demand house. Okay, we run up, supply shoot here. This tells me there's some breakout buyers coming in. 
okay but no institutions really buying that okay tight little bar ah now we have what i call a shakeout demand tab now this is covered in the blueprint video and you would have heard me talk a lot about this so in this video i'm going to show you the three main candlestick slide target but it's got to be in terms of the right identification the right kind of stock and then thinking about the risk so this is a shakeout demand tail and it's onto the 10 day ema so i look for shakeout demand tails gap down reverse bars trigger bars to occur in leading stocks sitting around one or more key moving averages at a minimum, I want to see the 10 day EMA because it just helps me stop buying extended stocks. So now I identify what I think is an optimal candlestick. So this is the identification. I already know Uber ticks all, all of the basically the fundamental boxes I'd be looking for institutional liquidity as well. So we can see here, this is the 20 day ADR percentage. Now, again, we're thinking about things from an identification standpoint, a controlling risk, risk mitigation, and then optimizing profits. Now, if you want the indicators that I use, take a pause the video here. Okay, the top one here, this is the ADR percentage. This is the one that I use here, and this is the one that you're going to see up here. So what I want to do now is I want to work out the potential risk that I'm looking to take. So I'm literally just going to target it through the high, place a stop loss underneath the low. Then I'm going to use the Fib retracement tool, hold control, snap it to the top, snap it to the bottom. So what I'm looking at here is an initial risk of 2.74%, assuming perfect execution, which is rare, but we're, just for the purpose of this video, so it flows nicely, we're going to imagine that. So when I am targeting a setup and I'm a swing trader, primarily using the daily chart, that's going to be my anchor point. But as you see, as we go to Carvana and we look at a gap down reversal bar later in the video, you're going to see me utilize multiple times frame analysis and bring in the one hour chart to it as well. So when I am placing my initial stop losses, my average stop loss is going to come in somewhere between 2% and 4%. Okay, if I start having a stop loss that begins with a four and certainly a five, I've got to think it's a ridiculously good setup and has a high 20 day ADR percentage. So I'm using the 20 day ADR percentage to keep the risk in check. Now, why do I want to do that? Because for me, I'd like my initial stop loss to ideally be less than the 20 day ADR percentage, but with a trigger bar and a gap down reversal bar, because in inherently those bars are wider, I will stretch to about 1.5 times the 20 day ADR percentage of the stock. So here it's obviously a bit more than the ADR percentage, but it is less than 1.5 times the 20 day ADR percentage. It's just a nice metric to keep the risk in check. Remember, we're treating our trading as a skill set. So when you're thinking about those four parts of a trade, identify, control, mitigate and optimize here, we're obviously thinking about the controlling, which is very closely linked with obviously the identification. And then you're going to see how it flows into the risk mitigation side of things as well. So here, what I'm doing is I'm thinking about the risk. For me, it doesn't make any sense going in here with like a seven, seven or eight percent initial stop loss because it's just way out of whack relative to the 20 day ADR percentage. And my reason and my hypothesis for buying is well, my expectation here is Uber is building this cup and handle. It shouldn't violate the low of this shakeout demand tail or a gap down reverse bar or a trigger bar like this here. The reason I'm buying it is my expectation is it's going to move up there. Now, I use primarily buy stop limit orders. So I'm looking to buy setting the limit within. 0.5% of the height of what will then be the prior candlestick being the shakeout demand tail, the trigger bar, the gap down reverse bar, as you are going to see. But so for me, there's no point having a seven, having a seven or, or eight or, or eight percent stop loss on this one here. So that's absolutely fine. Okay. So I'm thinking about the identification. I'm thinking about the controlling risk, keeping it in check relative to the 20 day ADR percentage. Now, for me, what I like to do is what I call active risk mitigation. I like to take the risk out of the position. Now, why do I like to do this? Well, for me, the purpose of risk mitigation is not to maximize the upside, it's to minimize the downside. Now, if you haven't read, there's another fantastic book. So I told you about Peak by Anders Ericsson, Atomic Habits by James Clear, and probably the best risk management book ever written about trading, and it's not even about trading, is The Art of War by Sun Tzu. I'd highly recommend you read that book and you link the principles that Sun Tzu is talking about in The Art of War book back to trading. Now, there's two quotes in particular that I live by and I try and embody in my trading invincibility lies in the defense the possibility of victory in attack okay the invincibility lies in the defense the possibility of victory in attack the other one as well is the good the good fighters of old first put themselves beyond the possibility of defeat and then look for an opportunity to to win or some or something like that but it's the point of you want to first and foremost position yourself beyond the possibility of defeat so what i'm trying to do with my trading is i work through the process first we look for the identification then we think about the controlling risk then we think about the risk mitigation then we think about the optimizing profits we're working through that logically and in the controlling risk and the risk mitigation, I'm trying to embody those quotes by Sun Tzu. My invincibility lies in the defense, the possibility of victory in attack, but the invincibility comes from exceptional risk management. And then the good fighters of old first position themselves beyond the possibility of defeat. 
So that positioning yourself beyond the possibility of defeat for me and how I interpret that and how I use that in my own trading is I want to get all of the risk out. So as I said a couple of minutes ago, the point of risk mitigation is not to maximize the upside, it's to minimize the downside. Okay, it's to minimize the downside. That's what I'm trying to do here. Okay, I'm trying to protect the downside. I'm trying to have exceptional defense. Exceptional defense. There's an old saying in football that strikers will win you a game, but a great defense will win you a league. Okay, it's built on defense. It's built on foundations. What was it? The uh, was it Vince Lombardi? We're gonna block, tackle, and something else better than any other team. We're really doing the basics well. Invincibility lies in the defense. So here, it's a cup and handle type pattern, shake out demand. So what I'm gonna do here is go. Ah, interesting. There's a base high hit. So maybe I want to be kind of free rolling into that, which will be about one times the initial stop loss. So this is a way to then be kind of thinking about it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look to take half off here at one times the initial stop loss. Now you may be saying, well, why are you looking? Why are you looking to do that? Could you go one third at two times the initial stop loss? And let me just explain this risk mitigation to you a little bit more. Okay. So if I just place this here and we get these lined up perfectly, okay, I just want to illustrate the point here like this. Okay. So you can see, right, if I was to buy X, whatever amount of shares that I'm going to buy of this stock, okay, my dollar risk assuming perfect execution is going to be 1.74 so a dollar 74 which is equates to two to two dot seven four percent risk okay but in terms of each share that i buy assuming it's perfect execution and perfect execution on the stop as well at these levels so 63 42 and 61 68 that's going to be a dollar 74 stop okay per share now when i'm then looking to free roll if i take half of my position off and assuming perfect execution you get filled at 63 42 and then you take it off there where they sell limit order at 60 65, 16, that means you're going to be selling at a profit of $1.74. So if we get in and we get filled here and then we get knocked out here, sorry, we get we get filled, we free roll it and then we get knocked out here. Well, we sold half our shares at a $1.74 profit, right? And then our remaining half get knocked out at a $1.74 loss. So they cancel each other out. So this is about positioning myself beyond the possibility of defeat. Once I have then done that, which is the point of risk mitigation, then I'm looking to optimize the profits. And we'll talk about that in a couple of minutes time. But what this also does as well is you want to remove any, any amount of randomness from your trading. Okay, if you think about the identification process, I know I'm spending a lot of time on this, but it's really, really important. My my videos hopefully are not fluffy. They're really in the weeds. I, I really in the weeds. I really want to help you improve as a trader and really kind of see this as a skill set and that you can improve at certain aspects of your trading, all aspects of your trading. But to do that, we've got to remove the randomness. So if you think about the level of detail that we're currently going into here, is there any randomness? nothing is random. You're very thorough in terms of your planning and your execution of your trades. There's no randomness in terms of the identification of a high quality setup as per your criteria. There is no randomness in how I'm thinking about controlling risk. There's no randomness in terms of the risk mitigation. There is no randomness in terms of how I'm looking to optimize the profits in this trade. Everything is planned. Everything is thorough. Because if it is planned, if it is thorough, if I'm treating it as a skill set and not just doing random things, it means I can improve upon it. I know exactly what it is I'm doing, when I'm doing it, and why I'm doing it. I understand the decision making. I understand the inputs that I am putting into my trading to then achieve certain and desired, certain and desired out, certain and desired outcomes. That's my stunner there. Okay, so here, if we then play it forward, right? So Uber gets out. Let's imagine that we get entered here and let's just uh, say our entry is here and we get filled on. So it actually gaps up a little pullback. So we then get filled here, right? Imagine we get filled at 63, at 63.42, right? So what I'm going to do is entry at 63.42. And let's do a hypothetical. Let's say we buy 3,000 shares of Uber here because the math will then be nice and easy. Then what, then what we're going to do is we're going to put a sell limit order in. So we sell limit order for 1,500 shares. And we're going to do that at 65.16. Why? Because remember what I was saying about the dollar about the dollar 74 risk associated with these ones, and then we're looking to sell a dollar 74 gain. So then, if we are able to sell 1,500 shares here, and then we get knocked out here at 61.68, we'll be break even on the trade. Okay. Now this is a trade that I took here. I actually bought it previously down here, and then I added to the position here. Again, why am I taking trades that I'm currently in? Because I want to show you these ones that I'm uh, that I'm in. You can go watch the weekday videos on my platform uh, if you uh, if you want powers and kind of planning these trades out ahead of time but then doing this in terms of buy by bar analysis as well is really really useful like go and pull up a lot of like tml type stocks over the last 20 years and just work through bar by bar on them like work through bar by bar understand your decision making process understand the inputs that you are putting into your trading in those four areas how are you identifying a setup are you just going going are you going down to the pub and talking to john 
and just asking John about random stocks and things like that. And you go, no, he said he said it was going to go up. I'm just going to buy it. Well, that's a bit silly, isn't it? Are you going to use a stop loss? Are you not going to use a stop loss? Are you going to mitigate the risk? Are you not going to mitigate the risk? Like you have choices. Okay, understand what are the inputs you're putting into your trades? What are the inputs in terms of identification, controlling a risk, risk mitigation, optimizing profits? What are you doing? Why are you doing it? When are you doing it? If you understand that, then you can start improving at it. Why? Because you're turning your trading from being random and, ha and haphazard into a skill set. I can get better at identifying setups. I can get better at controlling the risk. I can get better at risk mitigation. I can get better at optimizing the profits. I can get better at, ident at identifying the right type of stocks to trade. Rather than a $50, $50 million market cap biotech stock, why are you not trading in Uber? Why are you not trading in NVIDIA? Why are you not trading in CrowdStrike? Why not trading that are like real TML type stocks in the market? You got to understand why. You got to take the randomness out of these things, right? So let's keep playing this forward. Now, something else that is uh, that is useful. So hey, we're able to free roll the trade, right? So we're then able to free roll. And now what I'm going to do? So we achieve that there. I'd use a sell limit order to uh, do that because then if price hits that it, during the session, I don't have to be at the screen necessarily and kind of execute in that order. If it goes there, it's just gonna it's just gonna fill. So now what I'm going to do is just remove these. And again, I appreciate I'm spending a lot a lot of time on this, but hopefully it's useful. Now the other thing that you'll learn from the book Peak by Anders Ericsson is mental representations. Now, mental representations are how you build a deep knowledge and also a skill set as well. So you want to think about skill set and knowledge. They are two They are two separate things. You could have a lot of knowledge on a subject, but you could have very little skill. You could have a lot of skill on a subject, but very little knowledge on a subject. Now, ideally, you want to have a high level of skill and you want to have a very high level of knowledge as well. You want to have the two. That is obviously the, the ideal. But in terms of thinking about mental representations, this is how you build knowledge and it's how you build skill as well when you practice it in a deliberate manner and create feedback loops for yourself. So what I'm doing when I look and these mental representations that I have for these continuation type bases, certain candlesticks appearing around certain moving averages, I have expectations of what I'm expecting to happen next. So after I take an entry from say a shakeout demand tail like this, which is basically a hammer type candlestick or a doji dragonfly or a takuri line, but I just call them shakeout demand tails, my expectation is price pops up. Okay, so what I'm then expecting, the mental representation that I have is a pop a test and a reversal, which is basically going to be a higher high, a higher low, and then followed by a higher high. <clears throat> so pop, test, reversal. Now, then I build that framework into my process of identify, control, mitigate, and optimize, specifically in the risk mitigation part, because my what I'm trying to do is free roll into the pop, sit through the test, and then play the stock for a bigger move. Then we get into the optimizing profits. So then I'm trying to ride a trend like this and I'm just gonna let the stock go as far as it wants to go. So once we get into the optimizing profits part of the trade, <clears throat> I will then start talking about the optimizing rules and things like that. So here's the testing action, okay? Now it's pulling back down. Now there's certain things, again, mental representations that I would be looking for on the testing action. Ideally, low volume, multiple tight candlesticks, then real bodies, overall spread scenario. Why? Because if there is tightness in price and low relative volume, given this context here, then that, that kind of just signals to me, there's not that much distribution going on. And actually it's just further building out this potential cup and handle. Now, is there a potential ad there? There may be a potential ad there. I'm not going to do it for the purpose of this video. There may be a potential ad there, stop underneath the low. So then in the context of pop testing action, well then on the test, there's potentially the spot to be adding and kind of pyramiding into the position. I somewhat did that, I knew, but remember I had the initial entry down here in my actual trading account. I think I covered that in the recent YouTube video and then I added on this bar here. I could have then maybe been adding through here as well. This is how you pyramid and concentrate into a position. But this is normal, okay? So the testing action, well, the logical place is kind of testing the previous pivot maybe the high of where I was buying it as well. That could tie in with one or more key moving averages. And then we see hit Uber here. Okay, now we're starting to get a reversal. So now is the point where I could be looking to move my stop loss up, or maybe I just want to see it clear this a little bit more. And then if it can start going, okay, it's now beginning now beginning to go. So what I now want to do is again, that framework. So there's no, there's no randomness here. Okay, everything is thorough, everything is planned. So my expectation is, okay, pop, can I free roll into it? Test, can I sit for it? Reversal, can I now play the stock for the bigger move? So now I'm looking to ride the 10-day EMA and the 21-day EMA with parts of my position. 
because I would go back. So they're kind of the anchor anchor moving averages that I'm using as trailing stops. So closes below those are going to be exits for me. Okay, they would be exits for me. Now maybe I want to keep some back for the 50. Maybe I do. Maybe I don't. Depends on the character stop. Depends how the trade plays out. If I think it gets extended from the 10 day EMA, I may choke off all or part of the position. It depends. Okay, a lot of this comes back to the character of the stop. But now we've had that pop test and reversal. What I'm going to do is move up my stop loss on the remaining half of the position. So what I'm going to do is now move my stop loss up. And for me, I'd probably be going underneath the 21 and just underneath these recent lows. So I'd probably have a stop loss where that where that red line is. Tell you what, we'll actually um, just swap these over. Okay, so this is where the initial stop loss was about there. I'd now have a stop loss around about here, 62.95, because pop test reversal, I now wouldn't want to see the stock come down and fail like this. So we'll play it forward a couple more bars. Okay, just holding up fine, acting acting well. Now we're going to go into the earnings and the implied volatility move on the earnings from memory was 8.4%. So we want to think about the profit cushion going into the earnings, which is greater than 8.4%. I'm going to hold 452 week highs in a row, volume excel. This doesn't look like large operators are distributing to me. Hold into the earnings, that's what I did. Gap down reversal bar off the 10 day EMA and we'll go forward. I think that's going to be the uh, last bar there. Yeah, that's going to be, oh, we've got one more bar. That's going to be the last bar there. Okay, no close below the... Um, the 10 day EMA yet it's closing just on it maybe here maybe we exit maybe maybe we don't um, exit I actually placed a quarter stop loss there on the low and then got knocked out here because it was going to close below the 10 day EMA and then I've still got a quarter back on the uh, on the current on the current position right now um, but this here is how you can very deliberately kind of practice manage the trades remove the randomness out of it so what what we're going to do now is we're going to go across to Broadcom and I'm going to show you another shakeout demand tail Okay, so we've now got Broadcom loaded up. So we're looking at Broadcom here and we're going, okay, stocks come out of this big base here. What do you think institutions are doing around the earnings? This is very high relative volume and it's a very high price stock, about a thousand dollar stock on this 52 week highs all over the place. Okay, nice. So it's come out of this big base here, extended Broadcom, bigger stock, probably 21 day maze, more so where I'm going to be looking for it. So this is the point of bar by bar deliberate practice, okay? So obviously I know I know what's going to happen on these um, stocks, but I'm showing you where, where, my, where my entries were. You can go and watch the weekday video on my platform if you uh, if you really want so okay it's pulling down to the 21 day ema okay popping back up through look how the volume just dried up on this pullback you see that see how the volume dried up relative to what it was we were seeing on the rally so this tells me a lot of buying a lot of accumulation by large operators why because you can see the dollar volume just look at the volume and look at the price of the stock and as it's pulling back you've seen a lot of selling a lot of supply no i'm not seeing it and then it pops back up starting to reclaim moving averages okay interesting so what i'm then looking for is an optimal entry candlestick ah here we go this is a called a low pivot so this is a low pivot it's actually a gap down reversal bar, the bar beforehand, and then it's a shakeout demand tail. Look how the volume dried up. What's that tell me? There's not that much supply. So again, let's work through the process here. So I'm going to get the FIB retracement tool, snap it to the high, snap it to the low using control. Same here with the percentage. So now our risk on this trade, assuming perfect execution, which is again, you're going to get slippage and things like that. But so these videos flow a little bit better. I just want to keep it quick here. So this is going to be a one, a 1.88% 1 initial stop loss. Well, let's think about that relative to the 20 day average daily range percentage of the stock at this time here is 2.33%. Is that favorable? Yeah, it's around about two thirds or so, just over two thirds, isn't it? That's absolutely fine. Like it's a nice tight stop. It's sub 2% in what looks to be a leading stock where I think institutions have just been piling in here. Now, what I'm going to do on this one is let's say I want to go, well, there's plenty of running room back to the high of this base up here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look to sell one third of the position at two times the stop loss. Now, why would I want to do that? So if we go here and we then snap it to the high here and we just set these up perfectly. So let's then do this at there and then go 1123.66 like this. What you are going to see is you're going to see that we are now looking to free roll one third of the position at two times the initial stop loss. So the initial risk per share, this is obviously a very high price stock, is $20.35. So now because we're looking to free roll one third of the position at two times the initial stop loss, uh, the, shares, the shares that we're going to be selling have to be two times the amount that the stop loss is so if you times 20 if you times twenty dollars and 35 cents by two you'll get to forty dollars and 41 okay that is how the math works i think i'll take you through this in the, in the blueprint video so that's going to be our entry then we're going to look to free roll that okay so that's going to be our entry there so let's go with our entry here so our entry is going to be at uh 1882.96 and then we're going to look to free roll so what we're then going to do is put a sell limit order into the market that's how i do it but sell limit order in here so a sell limit at uh, we're going to go one one two three dot sixty six and again we're assuming perfect execution so that's going to be our free roll target for one third of the position okay so there you see even though it's like a doji supply shoot i haven't a sell limit order in there so sell limit for one third 
in there like that. So what we're able to do there is then free roll the trade. So great, we've now free rolled the trade. We've still got two thirds of the position. So remember, Sun Tzu, Art of War principles, good fighters of old, position themselves beyond the possibility of defeat. Okay, position yourself beyond the possibility of defeat. That's how I like to trade. I like to remove the risk. Again, the risk mitigation is not to maximize the upside, it's to minimize the downside. Really, really important concept, okay? So what I'm now gonna do is just do this and do this. Okay, like this. Now, what we could do here is if we just make that one blue like that. Great, we can play it forward. But again, what are we expecting? Pot, test, reversal. Let's play it forward. Okay, that's the mental representation that I've got in my head. So what do you see? Again, it's following that framework. Pot, Test, reversal, nice. And now I can move this stop loss that I had here. I can now move it up. So let's say, where's the logical place? Well, it's probably gonna be just underneath the 21 day EMA, just underneath this kind of low here. Looks about right to me. And again, the testing action. What did you notice? Tight candle six, low relative volume. Is that signs of distribution? It's not signs of distribution to me. The stock is acting in accordance with those mental representations that I have, because I've looked at millions and millions of charts over the years, okay? So this is what I'm expecting to happen. Okay, everything is acting in accordance with what I would expect. The stock is acting well here. Now I'm expecting some overhead resistance as it runs to the higher the base. So let's then play this forward. Okay, starting to break out, 52 week highs coming through. Now what I can do is probably move my stop loss up here a little bit more. Again, I'm not trying to choke it off. I'm looking to ride this. Okay, I wanna nail trends like this. This is what I'm playing for, okay? I'm a swing trader and I'm an intermediate term trend follower. I'm trying to nail these 10 day EMAs, 21 day EMAs, maybe keep some back for the 50 if it's appropriate for that stock. The best indication I think of how a stock is gonna move in the future, how did it move in the past? You wanna study the character of the stock. Does it like shake out tomatoes? Does it like gap down reverse bars? Does it like trigger bars? If it does, what are the type of base durations? What are the type of bases that you see? When you see those type of candlesticks, where are you seeing them? Are you seeing them on 10 days, 21 days, 50 days? Are you seeing them on clusterings of 10 and 21 day EMAs? Where are you seeing them? What's the character of the stock? We really want to understand that. When the stock then breaks out of a base, how 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 is going to be or what is going to be the optimal way to be optimizing the profits, both in terms of monetary gain but efficiency at the monetary gain as well? Is it just going to be 10 day EMA and choke it off, lower the day, lower the day of part of the position if it gets extended from the 10? Is it going to be, say, the 21 day EMA? What do you think is going to be best? Okay, understand the character of stock. Now, oftentimes it can be a combination of things. It can be going, yeah, 10 day EMA for part, 21 day EMA for part, maybe keep a little bit back for the 50. Up to you, but understand the character of the stock. Again, nothing random here. You should know what it is you are doing and why you are doing it. It's really important. So let's then scroll this forward over here. Okay, so we're gonna play this forward. So again, kind of pop, we're expecting a testing action. <clears throat> now here, it closes below its 10 day EMA. So what I actually did here with Broadcom is I decided to hold, because I was like, it's actually pulling back in to this prior base high, which is then a confluence of prior base high, so the prior ceiling becomes the floor, okay? So you'd now like to see the prior ceiling being the resistance, act as support, and then you have a confluence of the 21 day EMA. So I actually decided to hold here, tighten up a little bit of my stop loss and then stagger them, but I decided to hold here and think the 21 is gonna be pretty effective for Broadcom. So I decided to, um to hold here for Broadcom and then you see the demand coming back in. So good, it's holding this prior prior resistance is now holding a support, plus there was a confluence of the, of the 21. Now we can bring our stop loss up a little bit because we now don't really want to see it lose the 21 like this. And then we can play it forward like this. And let's go to the final day. So still no close after that below the 21, uh, below the 10 day email and a gap down reversal bar for the final candlestick there thus far. But that's where sometimes you can have an idea of, okay, I'm going to use the 10 and the 21. And then it happens and you go, well, do you know what? Every reason that I spoke about there, let me just tighten up a little bit with a stop loss, maybe stagger the stop losses like that. But there's no randomness. I know what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. It's really, really important. So now the next example, we're going to do DoorDash and I'm going to show you a trigger bar. Okay, so we're gonna see my entry on DoorDash in a couple of minutes time. So we're gonna go bar by bar and locate it. So DoorDash, good reaction to the earnings. I think it's like a TML type stock, this one. So far, good earnings reaction, good volume, 52 week high, yada, yada, yada. Holds the 50 day as well. Stock likes to shake out demand tail, something to note there as well. So let's play this forward. 52 week high is coming through. Stock's currently wedging up. I'm not gonna be that interested in it. Okay, pulling back down to the 21. Okay, pops off the 21 day. Okay, interesting. Ah, nice tight inside bar. So a trigger bar for me is off oftentimes a low volume inside bar sitting on one or more key moving averages. It doesn't have to be an inside bar though, but that point that I emphasize that on one or more key moving averages, okay? So again, this here, you could say, well, is this not a trigger bar? Is that a trigger bar? But arguably, 
it kind of is a trigger bar. Volume is below the 30 bar average, just about. But then you want to think about the initial risk. It's not sitting on one or more key moving averages. It's not sitting on the 10 day, right? If you then took your initial risk, because ideally I want to get my initial stop loss underneath, say the 10 day EMA at a minimum, it's about 3%, which would be about the same as the ADR percentage. But with trigger bars, you're really looking for initial stops of half to two thirds of 20 day ADR percentage. But for me, to just not chase extended stocks like this up here, I don't want to be buying it up here, right? It's extended from the 10 day EMA. Okay? It's V shape, I'm, I'm not buying it up here. Okay, I'm waiting for it to pull back in, and you start to see these type of setups, these type of candles eggs around one or more <clears throat> key moving averages 10 day, 21 day. 50 day more so for me 10 day and 21 day for the type of stocks i trade right but then we're going to look at this okay let's assess the risk get the fib retracement tool on it now because it's a trigger bar the risk is going to be pretty darn tight so we're risking a dollar 90 per share assuming perfect execution that's a 1.75 percent stop loss assuming perfect execution i'm going to stop saying perfect execution now because i've said it 10 times this video uh, but one 1.75 percent of a 20 day ADR percentage of two of 2.92 percent favorable absolutely it's favorable it's less than less than two thirds uh it's approaching half isn't it half would be around about around about 1.4 1.5 percent it's a nice tight stop so then we want to think about okay the risk mitigation tactics now risk mitigation you can think about the market environment as well so without going into too much detail here you want to think about the market environment okay where is the index has it just been trending up for four weeks is it short term extended what are you seeing from a breadth standpoint are you seeing negative divergences in terms of stocks above uh stocks stocks about the 20 day 50 day and 200 day readings are they in overbought territory are they in over in oversold territory so kind of the feel on the market what have you been seeing in terms of recent breakouts has it been kind of pop and drop or have you just been seeing breakouts explode through the gate what is the vix and the vxn doing in terms of volatility that there is then going to feed into the risk mitigation so as i said there are main components of a trade identify control mitigate and optimize but then there are subsections within those where we can look to increase our skill set okay we are making this decision that actually we're going to try and free roll quicker here because maybe the vix a spike we think the index is a bit of extended this stock might be a little bit of a lagging stock breath readings are actually in overbought territory so we're expecting the next move of importance to be from overbought to oversold so the proverbial tide is going to be going out so we're going to be going into a headwind we could look at seasonality as well okay seasonality we're going into a tailwind or a headwind all of those things feed into the risk mitigation as i said there's no randomness you should know what it is you're doing and why you are doing it so here let's say okay we're actually going to try and take half off here at one time the initial stop loss because we also have earnings on the horizon as well so ideally we want to get in it free roll it have a profit cushion greater than the implied volatility move heading into the earnings so again proximity to earnings can mean you can speed up or slow down the risk mitigation subject to how close you are a so, lot of things are going to this right so let's play this forward okay so doordash gets out first day so what we've been able to do here is we've had our entry plus free roll let me just write it in plus free roll and let's say we say sell <clears throat> a half hit okay nice now what we're going to do is just play this forward a couple of bars okay it's getting out quite well now maybe we're thinking here so this is what i did on this day here i then sold another quarter of a position now why did i sell a quarter of the position because what i want to do is is have a decent profit cushion going into the earnings Okay. I'd like to hold into the earnings. I'm not a trader that's scared of holding into the earnings. If I think it's a leading stock, I'm seeing positive price action. I understand the implied move on the earnings as well. And ideally, the position that I have left is greater than the implied move on the earnings. Again, I'm thinking about the risk management uh, element of it. Again, risk management, super, super, super duper in um, importance. So then we can play it forward a little bit more. That's going to be the final bar. So it's currently, if, again, if you're working through the framework here, so let's just put these levels on. If you're working through the fame framework of pop test reversal, so what has the stock done? popped okay can i free roll into it check then i'm trying to sit through the testing action but then obviously you have the complexity of earnings are coming up i think it's after the close trading view saying <clears throat> after the close on thursday okay do i want to hold do i not want to hold so now we're in the optimizing profits stage of the trades so we're in that fourth part but now we're thinking okay do we want to hold do we not do we not want to hold we've got to make some high quality decisions there so looking at is there a profit cushion is there not a profit cushion what's the implied move on the earnings what are we seeing other brother sister stocks do are there leading stocks in the market are we seeing a lot of kind of gap up and push higher on the earnings are we seeing a lot of stocks get absolutely hammered even if they are beating expectations on a revenue side and a sales side sorry an earnings and a revenue side and they're raising full year guidance and they're still getting walloped like what are we seeing okay so again there's a lot that goes into it there's a lot to be thinking about so that's going to be the final bar there 
uh, for, for DoorDash. But again, this bar by bar, just working through it like this. And again, pick up the stocks like, go and look at NVIDIA. How did NVIDIA move off over the last 20 years? Same with AMD, same with Shopify, same with some of the uh, some of the stocks that have gone from gone gone through all gone through all four phases of the, of the price cycle around COVID. So go look at Zooms, go look at Pelotons of the world. See how they went phase one, phase two, phase three, phase four, back to phase one. What are the common characteristics you notice a stock undergoes in a phase one accumulation base, in a phase two uptrend, in a phase three distributional top, and a phase four downtrend? You want to deeply, deeply understand how you relate what is going on in those specific those specific kind of price cycle phases to the action of the stock. Okay, are there positive earnings reactions? Are there negative earnings reactions? Where are you more likely to see these positive earnings reactions where it gaps up good volume 52 week highs? Probably in a phase two uptrend. You're probably not going to see that in a phase four downtrend as much, are you? Again, trending above all the moving averages, holding around certain moving averages. Everything should be really, really deliberate. As I said, that book, Deliberate Practice, Peak by Anders Ericsson, fantastic book. So what I'm going to do now is take you through the final one, which is a gap down reversal bar on Carvana. Okay, so this is Carvana. So this is a stock that I'm in at the time of filming this, and we're going to go bar by bar, and we're going to I'm going to show you where I was taking the trade. So Carvana, nice powerful uptrend hit. Now this is a much higher ADR percentage stock, and I'm going to talk about this in terms of momentum leader type stock soon. And Carvana, arguably building a big cup and handle type base and kind of running pretty hard as it transitions up and out the right hand side of this cup here and then pulling back down for a bit of a deep handle it's a very volatile stock very high short interest when i was taking the trade it was over 40 percent okay the short interest and this stock here has a history of being able to run pretty hard it goes up nearly 250 percent here so okay it's going to be a very different type stock to like an amazon of the world so this is why i said earlier on in the video the three type of stocks that you're looking to trade true market leaders momentum leaders group theme leaders as well you've got to know what is the type of stock that you're looking to trade now a stock can appear in multiple categories we'll talk about that in the screening a little bit later so carvana nice run up here look at the volume pops coming through so I call this bullish synchronicity, where you have the volume is confirming the positive price action. So look at these volume bars coming through, right? It's really starting to pop, and it's after the earnings, which quite interestingly on the earnings, the company was estimated to lose 70 cents, but they reported $3.60. That was a surprise of 600%, and there's a short interest in this stock of like 40% when I'm taking the trade. Not bad, right? Here's a gap down reversal button. It's popping back up. Okay, a little bit V-shaped in nature right now. So let's see if this can kind of pull back down. Yeah, okay, interesting, interesting. Let's keep playing it forward. Okay, shake out the Montel. Gap down reversal bar, gap down reversal bar. Now this one here, this is going to look a little bit unfamiliar to many of you, okay? This is a low pivot. Now what I'm looking at here thinking I'm starting to see evidence of large operators stepping up here and this looks like it's starting to round out the bottom of a potential cut and you can see the volume pops coming through you can see the relative strength look how the volume just dries up on this pullback and then i'm looking at the bars that mark the lows gap down reversal bar sign of demand shake out demand tail shake out demand tail gap down reversal bar gap down reversal bar now this is where we're going to utilize multiple time frame analysis so we're going to add a little bit of complexity here by going on to the one hour chart and i'm also not going to place my stop loss on the low of the day Okay, if I was to place my stop loss on the low of the day, targeting it through the high at 43.99 and just place my stop loss on the low, I'd place it a penny below, but I can't be asked to move it for brevity's sake in these videos. But at 41.75, my initial stop loss is going to be 5.1%. Now, remember what I said, if I if my stop loss starts with a 4 or a 5, I've got to think it's a ridiculously good setup and a ridiculously good stock. Now, the ADR percentage is 7%. It's a nice high ADR percentage here, but I don't want to be going 5%. So what I'm going to do is drop it down onto the one hour chart. Okay? Now, I can start to see the footprints this is a gap down reversal bar prior closes here gaps down opens here pushes up nice tightness more demand coming through prior closes here gaps down first one hour candlestick here gaps down opens here shake out demand tail pushes up and then just look at this for the rest of the session volume dries up now when i see an entry on the daily chart so that's going to be a trigger bar a shake out demand tail or a gap down reversal bar i like to drop it down onto the one hour chart and i like to see a very close convergence of the black the blue and the purple line that's the 10 ema the 21 ema and the 50 SMA for that time frame. You cannot get a paper clip between them is what I say, okay? That's really good, that close convergence, like it. Just helps me get, okay, I'm not buying an extended stock. This stock has had time to kind of base, consolidate quite nicely. And if I zoom out, you can kind of see this much bigger like cup and handle type pattern and just, it feels like it's trying to like round out the base here. I like it, okay? So I like what I'm seeing there, but I go, I don't want to have a five dot, 1% initial stop loss. I want to tighten it up. So this is where I use multiple time frame analysis and get, man, $43. So something like this in here, 
I could be tightening my stop loss up and placing my initial stop loss more so in here because you got this little kind of support level in here you got those three moving averages underneath $43 so now I can actually go in with a sub 3% initial stop now I got a little bit of slippage on this one but sub 3% initial stop how I'm targeting it off an ADR of 7% now that's pretty darn favorable right so now we're talking, okay, now we're cooking on gas, as my old PE teacher used to, uh, used to say, he wasn't a very good chef, um, he was a good rugby player though, uh, but here, right, so it pops up, great, can we free roll into that, so remember, our now free roll target is not there, because actually we're going intraday, we're using an intraday stop loss like that, okay, we're looking at that level there, I think it was 42.75, so now what we can do is we can get in and free roll it, now what I did is I took half off, so entry um, plus free roll half because Carvana is a kind of aggressive stock in terms of how it moves so I just want to get in hit it hard and then sit and let a trend play out so now I'm in so again identify control mitigate now we're into the optimizing profits so for me the way to optimize profits in Carvana is when I look at the action of the stock well it can be very aggressive so actually choking it off and going low the day low the day low the day is going to be quite effective so I want to be doing that with part of the position and then maybe I want to be keeping some for the 10 and some for the 21 as well but at least with part of the position like here you can see it breaks out here so low the day, low the day, low the day, low the day would be an effective way rather than just waiting for closes below 10 day MAs and 21 day MAs. However, here, really nice trend along the 21. So this is where I'm studying the character of the stock and I'm thinking about, okay, optimizing profits in terms of both monetary gain but efficiency of the gain. What do I think is going to be the best way, those guidelines to help me with Carvana here? I think it's going to be ways that I was just telling you, okay? So I'm going to be aware of that. So Carvana play this forward a couple of bars so Carvana starts getting out quite well and gap down on the CPI report above estimates now this is one here where here I was then placing a stop loss um, hit and then got knocked out part of the position there and I didn't get knocked out where I thought it did because of the gap down it happens such as trading again you can have a really good plan but the market's going to do the stock's going to do whatever the stock wants to do so you can have your guidelines but you can't impose that onto the stock and you can't say you must act like this okay as soon as you've bought all you can do is kind of like just just watch it basically you can't you can't influence the stock you can't affect the stock you just have to let the stock do what the stock's going to do and apply a bayesian mentality which is a fancy way of saying you update your decision making process when new information becomes available because new information becomes available we have a framework we have an idea of how the stock has moved previously we have an idea of how we're going to look to optimize the profits but we have to be fluid we have to adapt like bruce lee said be be, be like water my friend okay, you've got to be a little bit like water here okay you've got to kind of feel it flow with it how's the stock moving what do i want to do what's the index is doing what are other leading stocks doing so you can have a game plan but then oftentimes you'll change your game plan as a trades plan out you'll adapt to new information that is actually the sign that you have a high level of skill you're adapting to new information you're going right the stock has done this i'm now going to do this okay the rate of change in which you can adapt is going to be very very important remember what charles darwin said it's not the strongest species that should survive it's those that, uh, that can adapt to change the quickest it's going to be really really important so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to take you through how you can very quickly screen for these true market leaders stocks these momentum leader stocks and also the group theme leaders as well so this is my custom built stock screener called stock screen hero now it is specifically built to identify the three types of stocks i've been talking about which is true market leader stocks the momentum leader stocks and also the group theme leaders and there's free plans and there's paid plans available so you can go over to my website and you can test it out for free you literally just need an email address and a name and you can go and have a play around but i'm also going to show you the new charts that we've just installed that i'm pretty pleased with so i'm going to run my favorite preset screen which is the us powerful uptrend with high dollar volume plus high a ADR percentage. I just come here, click this one here, and then we are straight in. I'm going to click search, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the highest 20 day ADR percentage stocks to the top. So with the US stocks, it ebbs and flows, but we usually have somewhere between 5,000, 5,500 stocks. Now this screen breaks that down to 139 results. What am I looking for? Well, I'm looking for the country to be in the US. I want the price to be above the 21 day EMA, above the 50 day SMA, above the 200 day SMA. I want the 50 day average dollar volume to be greater than 100 million. So I want the liquidity for institutions to be there and i want the 20 day average daily range percentage to be above two and a quarter percent if you just want to look for the quicker stocks you could bump this up to like three or four percent if you wanted to what i like to do is cast a relatively wide net and then filter that net via relative strength or adr percentages or look for the highest 50 day average dollar volume stock so what i've done is now put the quickest stocks to the top now the quickest stocks as ranked by their 20 day adr percentage now there's a lot of crypto stocks right now given the strength of bitcoin as well so i'm going to click charts like this again now what I've got is two, I've got two per row. Now what I'm looking at here, the first two are going to be crypto stocks. This is Clean Spark and Marathon. Now again, you've got to have a bit of imagination as a trader here and go, wow, what chart pattern could you foresee building here? 
like Samaritan, right? Looks like a potential cup has formed here, right? You can see this cup type action, and then it could form a handle. Now, what's really cool about these new charts is we have the moving averages on them, 10-day EMA, 21-day EMA, and the 50 SMA, and I can now zoom in, look at that. I can zoom in. I'm really, really proud of this. Like this is this is pretty cool if you ask me, right? So I can zoom in. And then what I'm going is okay, short term extended. So remember, what I'm looking for is the black line, the 10 day EMA to catch up. Then I'm looking for what I call trigger bars, gap down reverse bars, shake out demand types. So I'm looking at marathon and going, wow, it meets all of this criteria, very high ADR percentage, liquid stock as well. I know that from the uh, from the dollar volume, and then I'd be looking for it to pull back down. So I can click my hamburger menu and go and put it in a in a watch list. Then I can be monitoring that watch list. I can import it into TradingView TC two thousand markets whatever whatever you want to do but stock screen here is designed to be a very very fast initial screener to initially identify those type of stocks tml type stocks momentum type stocks group theme leaders to identify them smci look at the powerful uptrend here zoom out stock came out of a big base here look at all the volume coming through if this can now build a flag into the 10 day mac that's going to look really interesting arm seven can up the stock great re relatively new ipo great reaction to the earnings can this pull into the 10 day email 21 day email here's carvana that we were talking about there's that entry that we were just talking about in there okay there's that entry popping back up through you can start to see how that cup and handle may form right another crypto stock so i'm going oh, okay potential cup and handle could form there let's keep going down uh, micro strategy another crypto related stock potential cup and handle look at the volume coming through now needs to pull back in build that handle in um, there pltr software ai related stock so ai strong theme right now this is on the earnings here look at the volume coming through breaks out of this base can this build a flag into its 10 day email or something like that okay click the hamburger menu want to be flagging some stocks like this so it just makes it super duper easy i think specifically this screen as well to identify those tmls those momentum leader type stocks you've got amd tightening around its 21 day ema and the group theme leaders as well okay what are the groups what are the themes that you're seeing strength in um as well you're seeing a lot of semiconductor stocks you're seeing a lot of crypto stocks you're seeing a lot of uh, software related stocks what is it that's popping up on your um on your radar s this is a cybersecurity ai related stock okay potential kind of like cup and handle needs to tighten around its 10 21 but that looks interesting whack it in a watch list watch and then i'll just watch it to see if it sets up as per my criteria so as i said guys there's, there's free plans available so you can go and test that across five different regions as well there's pay plans if you if you really like it and you like some of the other stuff we do over there but either way thank you very much for watching the video i really do appreciate all the support certainly if you made it all the way to the end so thank you for watching i look forward to seeing you in a future video